Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-Level Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of biological molecules, and in particular, that nucleic acids are important information-carrying molecules. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-Level Biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 5 of 8, covering DNA and RNA. This is the fifth video in our series of eight lessons on the topic of biological molecules. In the last lesson, we learnt about enzymes and how they function in the body. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. The first is to look at the structure of DNA and RNA, and then at ribosomes. Finally, we will cover nucleotide structures. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and read through them before we begin. We'll start by looking at DNA and RNA in more detail. DNA and RNA are both types of nucleic acids. DNA is responsible for storing genetic information. Genetic information means all the instructions necessary for an organism to grow and to carry out functions from day to day. RNA is responsible for passing genetic information from DNA to ribosomes. RNA is structurally similar to DNA. The main function of RNA is to transfer genetic information which is done by messenger RNA. Now we'll cover ribosomes. Ribosomes are made up of ribosomal RNA. In addition to messenger RNA, there are almost 30 other types of RNA. Ribosomes are also made up of proteins, which help ribosomes to make up new proteins. Ribosomes are a type of organelle. They read information from the mRNA to make proteins for various cellular functions, such as growth. Don't worry too much about this diagram, as we'll look at protein synthesis in more detail in section 4. In this diagram, we can see a ribosome, which is reading mRNA. mRNA is a copy of the base sequence from the DNA. The ribosome moves along the mRNA, reading it base by base, and the correct transfer RNA brings the correct amino acid along. We will now look at nucleotide structures. DNA and RNA are polymers made up of nucleotides. This is why we class them as nucleic acids. Every nucleotide is made up of three main components. These are a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, and a nitrogen containing organic base. Nitrogenous bases are organic, nitrogen containing chemical groups. The five different bases are shown here. You should try and remember their names. There are two main classes of nitrogenous bases, purines, including A and G, and pyrimidines, including T, C and U. There's no need to memorize the structures, just understand that they're all different. Next, we will look at the components of DNA and RNA. It's useful to visualize how the structures of DNA and RNA differ. Let's fill in this table together to see the differences. First, 
we'll look at DNA. The sugar in DNA is a deoxyribose sugar. And the bases that we can find are A, T, C and G. Now let's look at RNA. RNA contains a ribose sugar and the bases that we can find in RNA are A, C, G and U. Here are some key differences between DNA and RNA. First, RNA has a ribose sugar instead of a deoxyribose sugar. RNA has uracil as a base instead of thymine. Make sure you remember this key difference. DNA has thymine while RNA has uracil. This is a really common mistake that many people make and one that you should absolutely avoid. Now we'll look at condensation reactions. Multiple nucleotides bonded together can form polynucleotides. This occurs through condensation reactions in which water is released as a byproduct. A water molecule is released every time a phosphodiester bond is made, so in this case we will release two water molecules as we've made two bonds. Phosphodiester bonds will form between the phosphate group of one nucleotide and the pentose sugar of a second one. These are covalent bonds. These will create a polynucleotide chain. There's a sugar phosphate backbone which comes from the pentose sugars and the phosphate groups. These bonds can be broken through hydrolysis reactions. We can add water as shown here, leading to the formation of separate nucleotides once more. Now let's look at DNA molecules in more detail. DNA is made up of two complementary polynucleotide chains. These chains run alongside each other and they are called antiparallel. Hydrogen bonds will hold these polynucleotide chains together. The hydrogen bonds will form between the complementary bases on the two nucleotides. Adenine forms complementary base pairing with thymine through hydrogen bonding. Guanine forms complementary base pairing with cytosine through hydrogen bonding. You don't need to know these diagrams for the exam, just remember the pairings. The two antiparallel polynucleotide chains will twist to form a helical shape called the DNA double helix. Now let's cover RNA as well. The RNA structure, components and coding will be covered in this section. Let's fill in this table together to consider the differences. The first difference we'll consider is that RNA is made up of a polynucleotide chain, but only one of them. DNA is made up of two. Next, we'll look at the fact that RNA is single-stranded, whilst DNA is double-stranded. We know that RNA is made up of RNA nucleotides, whilst DNA is made up of DNA nucleotides. We also know that RNA contains a ribose sugar, whilst DNA contains a deoxyribose sugar. Next, we know that the bases in RNA are A, U, C and G, whilst the bases in DNA are A, T, C and G. Finally, we know that RNA 
is always shorter than DNA. Here are the structures again. And here are some more of the differences. Finally, we will look at DNA and the genetic code. Let's look at the timeline of DNA research. DNA stores all the genetic information in an organism. This AQA specification requires you to know a little bit about the history of DNA structure, so briefly learn what we're going to go through now. 1800 was the year that DNA was discovered. But it wasn't until over 150 years later that the molecular structure was discovered. This then led to many more discoveries in the future. As we've said before, you don't need to remember the dates or the names on this diagram, just a rough timeline. We've now covered all the learning objectives for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you're unsure of. We've now completed Lesson 5. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.